What's up, it's Layla. In this video, I want to show you how you can quickly get started rigging one of your custom characters. So the first thing I'm going to do is just load in my uh, custom sculpts using More Floater Pro. I have a written tutorial on my website on how to do this, so I'm not going to go into great detail. I'm just going to select my head and body morph that I want to use for this demonstration. Hit accept. That'll bring them in here. So now, let's turn on your uh, joint editor tool. Now you can see all the bones inside the figure. Let's dial in. I like to do well. You're gonna want if you have a separate head and body morph, you'll want to do them one at a time. So first, I'm gonna start with the body morph. I'm gonna dial that in. Notice that her shape changes, but the bones stay in the same position position they were. And now Daz actually has a pretty sweet tool built in that'll do a lot of the work for us. So let's go to Edit, Figure, Rigging, and then Adjust Rigging to Shape. And so you can actually run multiple passes of this to get the best results. Um, you'd probably want to if our head and body morph were in the same in the same as one morph instead of broken down into separate. But since mine are separate, I'm just going to basically run this on the body. So here are all the bones and here are all the face groups. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to remove the head from the bones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click on head, go to uncheck, uncheck selected in children. And that will unselect the head and all its children. And now you can leave all the face groups as they are. And then uh, I find I get better results if I leave adjust orientation off. You can experiment that with that if you want. But what seems to happen is like the bones will actually twist and then sometimes your bend sliders might become like a side to side slider or like I've had it where it like flips the eyeballs over and so up and down is more like down and up if that makes sense so anyway now we'll hit accept now you'll see that it automatically adjusted uh, all the bones to uh, the, the where the new face groups are or being influenced by the new face groups from my uh, custom sculpted character all right, so now, um, now if we, you'll notice if we dial the slider, it actually doesn't, the uh, new rigging doesn't follow with the slider. And so I actually show on my website in more detail, I have a written tutorial on there, I have how to save more, but I'm just going to quickly kind of show you. So um, I'd clean this up a little bit. I don't really want any negative values, so I'm going to go ahead and take that out and just leave it at zero. Uh, I'll use limits, uh, percent, auto follow, those are all good. Um, I'd probably typically rename this. Um, Daz has like a naming convention, like full body morph, abbreviated by FBM. So I'd probably put FBM and then Stella. And then uh, I like to have my series number on there. That way I can keep track of it if I ever need to go back to my original files. Um, usually if I'm actually going to sell the character, I'll remove that by that point. But uh, right now she's kind of still just a, you know, a personal character. So I'd probably throw that in there. So underscore 01.03. And then I'd you know clean this up a little bit too. This is the label you'll actually see inside Dad's studio. So i just say Stella body. And then uh, you can change where you want it to um, be saved at. Like inside this hierarchy here uh, typically for my characters at this point I just I have a separate folder for them you'll see a, or a separate group um, my sculpted characters so I'd select that path here right there um, you know but it, Daz would typically put a full body morph inside the actor full body people and then real world unless it's a stylized character but yeah I'm just going to leave it put it back to uh, my sculpted characters. All right, and then we'll hit accept, and that'll pretty make the dial a little prettier. And then it moved it to uh, my sculpted characters, and you'll see that I already have some in here. Um, I was just redoing this for uh, this video. All right, so now we have uh, our morph slider that'll control the morph, but it doesn't control the rigging yet. 
And so now what we'll want to do is we'll want to go to edit mode, which I'm actually already in, but you just right click and go to edit mode, except since I was already there, it turned that off, but I'm just going to turn it back on, right click edit mode. And now you right click on the, the property here, and then you go to ERC freeze. And this will bring up, basically what all these are is uh, all the morph origin and insertion points that have been um, changed by our adjuster rigging the shape. So you usually want to kind of give this a quick glance over and make sure you don't have any um, morphs in here that were unexpected. Sometimes, like with Genesis 3, sometimes you, you'd have like a navel morph and uh, I don't know, just something else like that. And so you just want to give it a quick glance over. Usually they'll all be at the top or the bottom, so you don't necessarily need to go through all these one by one. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I don't have anything in there that's unexpected. And so, yeah, we're just doing the um, the node. This is Genesis 8 female, so that's good. It usually pretty much all populates this for for you. And then uh, the property is our the Stella body that we're just messing with. And then you don't have to worry about any, any kind of atten attenuation for this. Um, no key to extract. And then you can turn off uh, restore figure if you want. Um, I typically just use these because it'll kind of snap everything back to the default. And then you can read dial in your morph to kind of see if it worked so i'm just going to leave those as they are and then we'll hit accept and now you'll see if we dial our slider it actually changes the rigging it's pretty subtle in this case if you look hard you can see like around the shoulders and i think this shoulder this uh shoulder joint gets a little bit longer they get a little bit narrower but it is working Looks like the, thigh, the hip thighs go in right here. All right, so now that that's working, I'd usually, I always leave them off when I save my morphs because sometimes, um, I don't know, it, it, you could do unpredicted things like when you'd start up Data Studio and load in Genesis 8, sometimes the morph would be on. I don't know if that has been fixed or if I did something else that caused that, but anyway, I always just turn my morphs back off and now you just save this as you would any other regular morph. So you'll go to File, Save As, Support Asset, Morph Asset. And now what you do is you just pick your asset directory. Um, I have This is where I usually install my Dacia stuff that uh, I purchase. And so I actually have a different one that I create, put all my, um, my personal creations in and is also kind of like my working directory. Um, so I changed that to my, my other library here. And then uh, you can put in your vendor name or your name, however you want to do it. And then you put in the product name. So in my case, it'd be Stella. And now you just want to find her in the list. And you can save more than one at a time. Um, but I just did her body right now. So I'm just going to find her body. And so it's under Genesis A Female, My Sculpted Characters, and then Stella Body. And then I just hit Accept and it would save this out. But I'm not going to save it right now because, like I said, I already had it saved. And now I'll show you how to do the same thing with her head. So we'll go back to. Uh, the morphs because I hadn't moved to Stella head. We'll dial it in. And then let's let's get a little closer look here. Alright, so you kind of let me change the max and minimum of this. I'll just rename it right now since I'm here. So Dacity is naming convention for head morphs is FHM full head morph unless it's a partial head morph then it'd be PHM. And then uh, the head 0107, that looks good. So let's rename this Stella head, make it look a little cleaner. Um, limits min 0, max 100. Use limits as percent in all follows. That's all good. Hit accept. All right now we get a little bit cleaner dial here. And you can see, again, once again, that it's dialing the morph, but not any of the rigging. And so we'll want to put the morph at 100%. Then once again, we'll go to edit. Figure, rigging, adjust rigging to shape. We'll go ahead and unselect everything. So I'm just going to right click up here and uncheck, uncheck all. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. Right click, uncheck uh, all. And now we'll just find her head here. And then we'll right click on the head, check, check selected in children. And now that'll select her head and all the children. And a lot of times it seems like it's a good idea to do the eyes separate. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck left eye and uncheck right eye. 
Now you'll go want to go through on the right side and find basically everything that pertains to the head. So let's see here. We got head. We're going to skip the eyes. So we'll skip left eye. And I think that's pretty much Oh, we got lower jaw. Here's a right eye. We'll skip that for now. There should be an upper jaw somewhere around here and a tongue, I believe is what we're looking for. Tongue and upper jaw. So now we'll hit accept. And you'll see that adjusted everything pretty good. Now we'll go back and we'll do that again. Edit, figure, rigging, adjust rigging to shape. Now we'll just do her eyes. So I'm going to once again uncheck all on that side, uncheck all on this side. And then let's find her eyes here. Left eye, right eye. And now we just find those on the face groups here. Left eye, right eye. And then we hit accept. You'll notice I adjusted that a little bit. And now again, it's not gonna, those, the rigging's not gonna move with the morph until we give it an ERC freeze. So we'll right click on the morph property. ERC freeze. Again, it's the Genesis 8 female and then our head morph. And then we'll just give this a quick glance over, make sure there's nothing in there that we didn't want in there. So that all looks good. We'll hit accept. And now you'll see that the bones follow the morph, the faces of the morph. So once again, we just save that out, file, save as, support asset, morph asset. And then again, I'm going to switch it to my my custom working directory and then put in the product name so you you even though it's a her head morph you'd still just call it by the product name stella because typically you'd create three um actual morphs for your product you'd have the head morph the body morph and then a slider that would control both the head like dial in both the head and body morph at the same time so just call it Stella or whatever your character's name is. And then once again, we'll just find it here. Oh, I actually didn't move it into my uh, my sculpted characters folder, but again, I'm just kind of quickly showing you this. I have more details on that part of it on that written tutorial on my website, um, but I think you should be able to get the idea. And then in this case, it's in morphs, morph loader, and Stella head. And then I just hit accept and it save it out. And then every time I open up Data Studio, it'd be in that same location. And then you can actually change it again and into you can put it in a different spot and resave it and then um, and then you know you can do that later on too if you want. Alright, well that concludes this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Thanks.